species around the world are hitching a lift on ships, apparently, threatening Antarctica's pristine marine ecosystems. That's the conclusion of a study tracking vessels that regularly visit the protected and isolated region. Here's our science correspondent, Victoria Gill. A land of extremes and a haven for marine life. But visitors could be bringing some unwelcome creatures to this frozen place. By tracking global shipping, researchers discovered that Antarctica is visited by vessels that come from 1,500 ports all over the world for research, tourism and fishing. Those ships, scientists say, bring potentially destructive species into this unique ecosystem. Ships that visit Antarctica don't just have, you know, one home port that they visit and go back and forth. These ships travel all around the world, so that was really surprising. And in terms of invasive species, that means that almost anywhere in, a wo in the world could be a potential source for new species visiting Antarctica. Antarctica's wildlife has been isolated for millions of years. But marine species like mussels, barnacles and crabs clinging to ships' hulls could harm or completely displace that native wildlife. On the Antarctic island of South Georgia, invasive rats brought by whaling ships threatened colonies of seabirds by devouring their eggs. A rat eradication mission, dropping tons of poisoned bait, has been declared a success, but it took nearly five years and cost £10 million. The burgeoning Antarctic tourist industry is a key area of concern. Got to wash our boots. A pristine place. We're going to be taking anything onto the Antarctic mainland that shouldn't be there. When we explored its impacts back in 2016, almost 40,000 people travelled to the Antarctic. In the 2019 season, nearly 70,000 tourists visited. The British Antarctic Survey is calling for stricter biosecurity for ships that visit Antarctic waters for any reason to be screened and cleaned more frequently. They're measures to protect what scientists say is the last pristine coast on Earth. Victoria Gill, BBC News.